What we're looking at now is the male reproductive tract, urogenital system. What we're going to do is we're going to look at two different models because different models show you different things. We're going to start here with the testis. The male gonad is called the testis, plural is testes. So on this model is shown here, this model we have here. This is where the sperm is formed. Then there's a tightly coiled area outside called the epididymis. This is where the sperm is going to mature. It takes uh, six to eight weeks to mature. Um, and then on ejaculation, it's going to go up the vas deferens, which is in the spermatic cord. This model depicts the spermatic cord, which has the testicular artery and vein, as well as the vas deferens. From here, we go through the superficial inguinal ring. Let me turn this model a bit so you can see it through the inguinal canal and then out the deep inguinal ring. We're going to continue, and here you can see the separation. You can see the vas deferens very nicely. That's going to go around the back of the bladder. So this organ above the prostate gland is the bladder. And it's going to go into the seminal vesicles. The seminal vesicles produces a lot of the, um, the liquid component, the semen. It's very high in glucose because this is going to help nourish the sperm because it may take them a couple of days to find the egg that they're trying to fertilize. Okay, then let me open this up. Again, this would represent the um, seminal vesicles. From here, we go in through the ejaculatory duct. Can we see this? Okay, the ejaculatory duct is going to meet up with a portion of the urethra. So let's backtrack a little bit. This is the bladder here. We see the rugae, the folds in it. And coming out of the bladder, we have the urethra. So remember from the kidneys to the bladder is the ureter. From the bladder to the outside world is the urethra. The urethra in the male is divided into three sections. If it's in the prostate, we have this single gland here called the prostate. It's called the prostatic urethra. If it's in the UG diaphragm here, it's called the membranous urethra. And then if it continues down in the penis, it's called the penile urethra. It's also at this point called the spongy urethra, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But let's backtrack a little bit. One thing that I do want to point out is the bladder holds the urine that is made in the kidney until it's ready to be released. Um, and here we have the ejaculatory duct coming from the seminal vesicles, um, taking the sperm from the testes. So at no point uh, does the urine um, go into the semen. The semen, when it comes out, is clean, okay? So I'm going to um, show you the penis down here. That's the dangly part on the outside. So the penis has three chambers. It has two on the bottom, which are um, individually called corpus spongiosum. You have um, one corpus spongiosum, and then on top you have two chambers called corpus cavernosum, or um, plural would be corpora cavernosa. The difference is the corpora cavernosa are, do you see these little caverns here? These are going to fill with blood because that's what's going to help hold the penis firm and erect so it can do what it needs to do. On the other hand, down here, the corpus spongiosum, we want that to remain soft and spongy because if it were hard, like the top part, it would close off the urethra, which means the sperm couldn't leave and it kind of defeats the whole purpose. So the bottom half has to stay spongy. Here at the end, we have our external uh, urethral orifice. If you look on the outside, the larger part is called the shaft. This tip, the mushroom cap, is called the glands. There's no D in it. It's G-L-A-N-S. And the skin covering it is the prepuce. And again, over here where we had the, um, the gonad, the testis, the skin outer holding is called the scrotum. I'm going to put this back just to give you another perspective. Again, this is the bladder here and the single prostate gland here. So let me go back to the other model and show you something a little bit different. Again, 
this model is also a model of the male reproductive, but some things are shown differently, so I'd like to point them out on this model. If we turn this around, this is the bladder. You can see the rugae here. So what we have coming around the back of the bladder, right here, is the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. The one going up and down is the ureter coming from the kidney. So that makes sense because this is coming down from the kidneys, whereas this is coming around the bladder. Then if we turn it around, we see the seminal vesicles here. Okay. And again, this is supposed to be the ejaculatory duct coming into the prostate. So do you remember I said that coming through the prostate is called the prostatic urethra. Here's that UG diaphragm. So this little section right here would be the membranous urethra. And then this long section here would be the penile or spongy urethra. It's called the penile urethra because it goes through the penis. It's also called the spongy urethra because it goes through the corpus spongiosum. One gland that I didn't point out on the other model, which is visible here, is right in the UG diaphragm. We have this little orange dot that's supposed to represent the bulbo-urethral gland. The bulbo-urethral gland uh, produces the slippery um, alkaline pre-ejaculate. And what that is going to do is that's going to help cleanse the urethra because remember, urine is acidic. Uh, this is alkaline, so it's going to help balance that out to make it a more pleasant environment for the sperm so they're alive when they get to uh, the egg. So in total, we have three glands, the seminal vesicle um, left and right, which are on the back of the bladder, a single prostate gland, which is below the bladder, and two very small vulvo urethral glands, which are in the UG diaphragm.